and welcome to OCN. Welcome to a teaching today, the Word of God, and it's exciting because my husband just taught. Um, we're here at the studio and talking about taking um, the offensive. And I didn't know, well, <laughs> he's using the same scripture that I am. So, but my title is Dangerously Armed. <laughs> Or armed and dangerous, dangerously armed. So, you know, he gave the points on taking the offensive, and I thought that is so excellent and why we need to take the offensive rather than defensive. Defensive, you never win any battles when you're on the defensive, down through history and sports and all of that. But we're going to take the offensive. Because the devil is taking the offensive, isn't he? But he's under our feet. So let's go to Ephesians 6. Um, we're talking about principalities and powers. Ephesians 6. I know you know this, but it's good to go over this again. Finally, Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I'm going to take this phrase by phrase as we go along. I am strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Is his might. Is his might. Oh, put on the full armor of God that you uh, may be able to stand firm against this, uh, the schemes of the devil so that we can stand firm. Firm. He has said this, stand firm. I'm saying to you now, listening to this and into the word of God, you are going to stand firm. You can. He says, you can do it because I'm going to put on this armor, full armor of God, that I am able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. They are in the second heaven, on uh, the atmosphere above us. Uh, and But we are seated in heavenly places, which is the third heaven. Uh, we are seated there. That's what the word says. When we died with Christ, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we should be looking down on these spiritual forces. And we know that they fight against each other. They all want to be in control, don't they? Oh, they want to be in control. There's jealousy. There's hatred. There's anger. There's bitterness. But in God's kingdom, we're in a new kingdom, aren't we? There should be love. Oh, we don't let any of these things of anger and bitterness in or um, oh, these things. Oh, okay, so let's see. Therefore, verse 13, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day. These are evil days, aren't they? Darkness is increasing. Darkness, oh God, help. And having done everything, he said we can do everything. We can. We stand firm. We will stand firm. So therefore, stand firm. Firm, stand firm, stand firm. When we don't see anything happening, we're just standing. We're standing. We're waiting on God. God, let's see. Uh, what weapon are we going to use now? In a battle, there's different things to do. But we first have to spend that quiet time with God. Let's see, God, you said I could stand firm. That's your plan for me. I want to please you in all respects. In fact, I'm going to pray right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these dear people who tuned in. Oh, according to Ephesians 1, oh, Father of all glory, give unto me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that our eyes may be opened, oh, to your purpose and for the inheritance that you've given us, Lord Jesus, in Jesus Christ. This is Father of glory, <laughs> in Jesus Christ. Oh, and that we know the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe 
all that were seated in heavenly places and that, Lord, you put all of these powers under your feet. Ephesians 1, I'm doing that. All these things are under our feet. They are, they are, even though they're making a lot of noise, making a lot of decrees, and we hear that. We're careful what we see on the news. We're careful, but we know that God is sitting in heaven, according to Psalm 2, and he sees what's going on. He hears, he sees. Oh, darkness and light are the same to him. He hears, he sees all the evil plans. Oh, Lord Jesus, against the body of Christ. We are the body. We are set aside, and we are one with Christ. Okay, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. Loins, they used to do that even overseas. They would uh, have to climb the mountain or something. They'd have to gird their loins, pull their skirt up, and tie it up, and... uh, Oh, gird your loins, maybe that's like your reproductive organs or your hips, gird them, gird them with truth, with truth. God's word is truth. It stands forever. You know that. You know that. His truth, he will prevail. He has prevailed. He has defeated the enemy. Now he's teaching us how to do it. Because we are his children, he wants to help us. He's going to help us be dangerously armed. He's given us these weapons, so we got to know the truth. Um, I just remember, um, even Pilate said to Jesus one time, what is truth? In fact, he asked Jesus, are you the son of God? Uh, Let's see. And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting, so I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Do you remember those scriptures? We were delivered from the power of darkness. We were delivered. And Jesus could have called forth the angels. The angels were, oh, were waiting. They were waiting. They wanted to they wanted to come and help him. And Jesus said, Oh, Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say correctly, I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Now Pilate was frightened, wasn't he? His wife had had a, a dream. Oh, and then Pilate, uh, she said, oh, I was tormented. I couldn't sleep. Oh, so she told Pilate, and Pilate said, well, I find no fault in him. Oh, but he didn't have the courage because the men were starting to start in riot, and the Romans would come in and maybe depose him and send him somewhere else. But Jesus is the truth. He knew we had to go through that. And I'll say the angels were waiting there. Thousands of angels waiting there. They wanted to come and help. But oh, but they waited and waited. And Jesus said, I have to, I'm going through this. I know the reason I came to earth. And it's to make a family for my father and me. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, let's see, truth, truth. He came to bring the truth of the gospel, that all men are created in the image of God. Okay, and let's see, let me see. Loins girded with truth and having uh, the breastplate of righteousness. Let me talk about the breastplate a minute. Breastplate, um, it's like a bulletproof vest, isn't it? A breastplate. Isn't that what it means to you? And that's what the policemen do. Thank God for our policemen. Oh, God, help them. Give them wisdom. A breastplate is like a bulletproof um, vest. So we have to see that we have a bulletproof vest because there's going to be all these lies coming against us. And then he talked about righteousness. Righteousness is a weapon. It is a weapon. Remember, they found no fault in Jesus. 
no fault in him, but he had to give in to pay the price. The devil couldn't do, couldn't do it, but he was allowed. He gave himself for our sins. Um, but righteousness is a weapon. It is a weapon. We have that. Okay, let's see in some other scriptures about righteousness. And it says in, um, let's see, in Greek, righteousness means equity, justification, justification. And um, let's see, Abraham believed God and it was credited to, to him as righteousness. Do you believe God? That's righteousness. If I believe God, what he says, he says. And then first, let's see, Second Timothy 4, 8, in the future is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. There's going to be a crown of righteousness. And then Ephesians 4, 24, put on the new self. Oh, my husband talked about this, and we know this. Put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, created in righteousness. This is what we were created. Righteousness was Adam and Eve created in righteousness and holiness of the truth, that's the new self that we can put on. He's given us the gift of righteousness. Oh, he's given us for those who have believed him and suffered and, and submitted to him. He's given us a gift of righteousness. So that's one of our weapons, righteousness, righteousness. Oh, crown of righteousness stored up for us, but now it's impu imputed, imparted to us when we receive Jesus as our Savior. We became a new creature in Jesus Christ. Okay, and then it says, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Here we go again. Having shod your feet, feet, feet with the um, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, our feet, wherever we go, we say, oh, God, give us this preparation of the gospel of peace because the world is in such turmoil. People are in turmoil. Turmoil, but we have a good gospel is the gospel of peace. We have that. Oh, you've given it to us. Peace and hope and righteousness. So we bring the gospel, even when the, when the angels came and said, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth to those whom, with whom God is pleased. He's pleased with mankind. He's, they're created, created in the image of God. That's why it's so, so sad when the babies are killed. They're created in an image of God, image of God. Okay. Now let's see, in addition to all, taking up a shield of faith, a shield of faith. You know, I have this um, uh, Passion Bible, and I love it. Okay, this, um, what is it, Dick Richard Sims, he puts it. Every time he thinks about the shield, he talks about a wraparound shield, and I love that. I was just reading early this morning about a wraparound shield in Psalm 7. A wraparound shield, because we think of a shield as just to cover the front, like the Romans did or the Zulus did or whatever, and maybe on the side, but a wraparound, is there such a thing as a wraparound shield? Well, let's see, Isaiah 58 says, if we do righteousness, that he, the glory of the Lord is our rear guard. Oh. If we're doing what God wants us to do, the glory of God is our rear guard. So anyway, okay, let's see, feet with, uh, feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is peace? It is quietness. It is rest. It is shalom. It is prosperity. If you look that up in the Greek, he's given us peace, hasn't he? Oh, but we don't see it. Oh, we don't see it. What's happening on the streets? Truth has fallen down in the streets. There's no justice. 
and clamoring for justice, but God hears the cry of the abused. He hears the cry of the needy. He will bring justice. He will. He's given us that. Oh, that righteousness and that justice. Um, okay. Gospel of peace. Now, verse 16. In addition to all taking up a shield of faith, that's that wraparound shield of faith. Now, remember those things. It is impossible to please God without faith. You want to please him. I know you do, dear friends. I know you do, but it's hard. But he's given to each man a, a, a measure of faith, but we need to use it, and this is the time when we can use it because the devil wants to rob, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? He wants to put sickness on you and what he's put on you. Oh, you're using your faith. Using your faith, it is a shield of faith. Okay, with which you are able to um, extinguish all the flame, flaming missiles of the evil one. It's not just one or two. There's going to be flaming missiles there. He will say, oh, you're rejected. You're in the wrong country. You need to go to another country or you need to find another job. You need to find another wife or husband or whatever. He's going to get those flaming missiles. But with his shield of faith, we need to know who we are in Christ. We are in Christ. We are called and chosen and anointed for these last days. These last days, I'm thankful God has raised me up and, and, and kept me healthy by that fountain of life in me. Out of my innermost being is a fountain of life. And, and even, um, let's see, my husband taught on the fear of God uh, a short time ago. And that scripture came out to me. The fear of God is a fountain of life. There's a godly fear of God. It's not, oh, I'm so uh, scared of him. But I have a godly fear, a godly fear. Fear, oh Jesus, all and extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. So, what does he say to you? Oh, you're no good. Oh, you need to leave. You need to find a different job. You, you oh, you're poor. Uh, you're sick. Oh, you got all these these things against you. All of these things, nobody recognizes you. They don't appreciate you at work, wherever you are. Your family doesn't appreciate you. And, oh, they don't, don't agree. And, oh, so many lies. So many lies. And I think especially even the young people think, oh, we can't be with our friends. And when, what do we talk about? Food, or we, we can't do this, and we can't do well at school, and we can't. It's not safe on the streets, and what movies can we want? We can't go to movie houses, and all these, these things. So they become suicidal. I come against that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. That's from the devil. It is not your time to go. Oh, God is where he's calling you up in Psalm 91. Psalm 91, with long life, he will satisfy you. Show him your, his salvation. That's if you abide under the shelter of the Most High, Psalm 91. Whatever virus might be coming. Oh, whatever virus might be coming, whatever assignment the devil has. He's made me victorious against all these flaming missiles of the evil one. All the flaming missiles of the evil one. Okay, but I want, oh, without faith, I want to talk just a minute about a, the shield of faith. Uh, let's see. Someone said, faith is the currency of heaven. Currency, like it's. Well, we give to God. We give to God. That's in currency. It's the chains, the money, the dollar bills, the whatever the currency is of heaven. And without faith, without any of that 
first, faith, we can't please him. Faith, <laughs> in the Burmese lang language, is yo ji jin. <laughs> Uh, we were able to talk to those in um, Myanmar just a short time ago for about seven hours and once a week. Oh, talk about faith. They need their, the, oh, the army is coming out. They're on the streets. They are killing the people there. All the young men that we supported in Burma. Oh, no, he had to leave everything and go hide. He had a Bible school there. I don't know what happened to the students. I don't know where he is. They cut down him on Facebook. But I just trust God. He is strong in faith. God is going to protect them. He has an armor of faith. And then the other ones in northern Burma there that we talked to. Oh, in the city, I won't mention. But anyway, the, uh, the military is out there. The military, and they want the power. They don't want the people to say anything. They don't want them to demonstrate as they say, don't go out on the streets there. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Faith is a currency of heaven. But they have faith. We've planted lots of seeds there. Now I have faith that something good is going to happen, that God loves those people. God loves those people. God loves America. I believe God is going to do something. Okay, and let's see, and then the verse 16. And uh, let's see, um, where did I go? Let's see, the sword of the Spirit, verse 16, which is the word of God, and which is, um, let's, well, in addition, taking up the shield of faith and take up the, uh, here we go, to the helmet of salvation. Now, the helmet, uh, they put on the head, you'd think that's an uh, offensive helmet, offensive weapon yes it is because the devil wants to put all these lies in your head but you put on this helmet jesus put the crown of thrones on his head didn't he to give us a new mind a mind of christ and then we cast down all of this imagination everything raised up against the knowledge of jesus christ oh so i have a helmet of salvation the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's the sword of the Spirit. Now, we just keep it here, and we're here. And what, what, we kind of fight when the devil comes to tell us a lie. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. I am a new. I used to be in your kingdom, and you cannot control me anymore. No, I am weak, but I am strong in the power of his might. He lives in me. I am his temple. I am his temple, so devil, leave me alone, you liar. I am not rejected. I am a vessel of honor, only by his grace and mercy. And if there's anything wicked in me, my God is going to show that to me. Oh, when any of this pride comes up, or pride comes up, or this judgmental spirit, or anything, or jealousy, the Lord's going to show me. The Lord's showing me day by day, as I surrender to him. Okay, the word of God, and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I, I believe you got plenty of scriptures there. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. As you read the word, it's going to come alive to you because the Spirit's in the Word, the Spirit's in here, and God wants to speak to you. He loves you, dear friends. He keeps you in his mind. He remembers you, that we are weak, but we were grafted into the vine. We were grafted in, and yes, he's pruning us sometimes. Oh, we had to go through this COVID thing. Jack and I got just this very slight case of it, thank God. But we had the word of God was our medicine. Worship was our medicine. And we just relaxed. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. He is such a good God. Such a good God. Okay, we did that. We got the helm on. We have the belt of truth. Let's see. Loins and having a shot or feet with a perfect righteousness that he's given to us. His righteousness. Shield of faith, uh, extinguish 
all the flaming darts of the evil one, eject, rejection, whatever lies raised up against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, taking up the helmet, the helmet to protect our minds because the devil wants it. That's a battleground, isn't it? In our mind. In our mind. If he can take over our mind, then he's got us. He's got us. Oh, but he can't. We are dangerously armed because we have a helmet, the gospel of peace, helmet of salvation, gospel of peace. We have peace. We are not hopeless. We are not hopeless. God is going to do something. Oh, in fact, I was just praying um, even, uh, let's see, when was this? In, in March. Oh, um, this is March 21. Gave me Isaiah 56, verse 1. Thus says the Lord, preserve justice, do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come. He said that, and this is Isaiah, 600 years before Christ. Salvation is about to come, but Isaiah didn't know exactly. Oh, for his kingdom, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the kingdom shall be on his shoulders, and there shall be increase of his government shall not cease. So it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Okay, on righteousness, salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Righteousness, righteousness is going to be revealed. Things that are hidden are going to be revealed. And he said to me, blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who takes hold of this. That means if I believe Salvation is about to come. Salvation is about to come. There are some loved ones that I know that you have. Salvation, they are not walking with God, and you love them, so we bind those evil spirits. We have authority over evil spirits. We're seated in heavenly places, and like Jesus, those evil spirits are under our feet, under our feet. Oh, and this is the victory that overcome of the world, even our faith. Even our faith, so we bind those evil spirits and loose the Holy Spirit for your loved ones. And we loose the, the healing angels for your body, dear friends. Oh, Jesus, no condemnation now, no condemnation. You have the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the word of God in your mouth. Oh, he is your redeemer. You're called, chosen, and anointed for for these last days, <clears throat> um, the word of God in your mouth is going to quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, all of the one. My faith and patience, you inherit the blessings. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. Okay, did I cover it all? No, let's see. Now, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. Yes, that's another gift he's given to you to pray in tongues. I believe you are healed. Praying with all kinds of prayer. My husband got many different kinds of prayer. But we're in the prayer of faith. You did, and you were born again because he found you. He didn't give up on you, dear friends. He didn't give up on me. He waited until I finally surrender to him and to whom much is given, much is required. But he gave, and Romans 5, 17 said, to whom much is given, much is required. What is that, Romans 5, 17? But we reign in life through one Christ Jesus. Gift of righteousness. We reign in life. That the devil is under our feet. Sickness is under our feet. When we lived in the jungle, I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. The devil is under our feet. So I declare you are free, free from sickness. Oh, from all of those, all those flaming missiles of the evil one. God bless you abundantly. Give to OCN. Give to OCN. Your, your blessings will multiply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. Bye-bye.